If I asked you to draw a fish, I'm pretty sure the result will vary. I mean, sure, you can just draw this generic drawing of fish, but if I tell you to at least try, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get different results. There would most likely be a lot of bias if a person has their own favorite fish. After all, when you think about it, fish do have a lot of forms. Some fishes have elongated body, still with various form by the way. While it is quite intuitive to draw a fish with scales, some fishes don't have apparent scales. Some quite literally don't have any scale. Some fishes are even translucent, to the point that you wouldn't illustrate scales when you draw them. But now, my question is, are you aware that among the images that I've shown, one of them is not a fish? In every group of images I've shown actually. These things. These are images of landslides, which I think is not a generally known animal. So, let me bring up the question. What exactly is landslide? So, first of all, Lancelet is not a fish. Lancelet is still a chordate though. To be precise, a cephalochordate. A little bit of taxonomic history lesson. Filum chordata was divided into four subphyla a long time ago. Cephalochordata, which is the lancelet that we're talking about. Urochordata, which is actually validly known as tunicata, the tunicate. Hemichordata, the hemichordate. And of course, vertebrata, vertebrates. The basis of this classification was pretty simple. The existence of nodocord, which is an elastic, semi-flexible road-like structure along their body. This is basically the axis of their embryonic development. In invertebrate chordate, nodocord also becomes the main attachment point for their muscles, which enables locomotion. In vertebrates, the nodocord becomes the core of the vertebrae. Well, what I said just now is the general idea. Hemichordata is now classified as their own phylum because, first of all, we did the phylogenetic analysis and we found out they are grouped together with the echinoderms. And second of all, what we thought is a notochord inside them is actually a different structure, which we know calls tomochord. It basically has the same function though. So now, phylum chordata is divided into three subphyla, cephalochordata, tunicata, and vertebrata. Aside from notochord, there are actually four other traits that group these animals together which are dorsal nerve cord, pharyngeal slits, endostyle, and post-anal tail. Of course, there are exceptions if we look at the adult form of each chordate, but these traits persist at the early stage of their development, or should I say, our development, because mammals are also chordate of course. Now let's focus on lancelets. Lancelets are called lancelets because, well, they kinda look like a small lens. They are also known as amphioxus, which means sharp at both ends, also because of their shape. As far as I know, there is only one class of extant lancelets, which is leptocardi. Leptocardi means thin heart, which is not exactly true. I'll talk about this later. There are three genera of extant lancelets, branchiostoma, asymmetron, and epigonichthys. Some classified each of these to their own family. But now, the generally accepted classification is to simply put them in one family, branchiostomatidae. Currently, each of these three genera have relatively simple diagnostic characters. Branchiostoma have gonads on both sides of their body, while the other two only have gonads on their right side. Asymmetron have an urosteloid process, which is this elongated tail protrusion thingy, while epigonichthys don't. And that's it. Quite simple, right? However, the molecular analysis is not exactly in line with that because epigonichthys group together with branchiostoma, not asymmetron. So yeah, it is simple, but actually not really. Anyway, although lancelets are not that well known by the public, lancelets can actually be found in various coasts, but not towards the polar region. In fact, I think some people have stumbled upon them and simply don't realize it's a lancelet and not just a random fish. Still, even though they live in shallow water along the coast, it's not that easy to randomly find them because they are typically half buried in sands. Most of the time, you need to deliberately look for them to find one. So yeah. Next, let's talk about their morphology and anatomy. But before that... Lenslets are relatively small. They can be as small as 2cm long, or they can be up to 8cm long, depends on the species. They have skin, but it consists of a very simple epithelial tissue. Hence, their skin is translucent. They don't have mucous layer nor cuticles on the skin. And of course, 
no scale. While it is not apparent because it's not heightened like in most fishes, they do have fins, namely a single row of dorsal fin, a single row of ventral fin, and caudal fin. So they don't have pectoral nor pelvic fins, unlike most fishes. I've seen some articles stating landslats don't have a head, which could be true, depends on your definition of head, you know? So let's talk about it. Landslats don't have a cranium, no skull, that's for sure. They also don't have a brain. Not only that, their notochord extends into their quote-unquote head. If we compare that fact to vertebrates, no vertebrates have a notochord that extend into the head. You know, our spine don't extend into our head. Our cranium lies directly on top of our spine. In most other vertebrates, their cranium lies directly in front of the spine. So yeah, like I say, the notochord, or let's just say the vertebrae, usually don't extend into the head. But not only that, they don't have eyeballs. Still, they do have eye spot around the tip of their dorsal nerve cord, and they do have a mouth, which is almost always in the head if we look at most other animals. So yeah, you could argue they do have a head. Still, if you look at them, there is no enlarged part towards their front, nor any obvious morphological features that separates their quote-unquote head with their quote-unquote body. So it's understandable if some would argue landslats don't have a head. Like I said earlier, depends on your definition of head. Anyway, their mouth is equipped with oral cirri, or sometimes simply called oral tentacles by some. They have pharyngeal slits around this part right here, which is typically called gill slits in other vertebrates. But that term is not exactly correct for landslat because they don't have gills, technically at least. These pharyngeal slits are not used for respiration. Rather, these are parts of their digestive system, which is why, nowadays when talking about the diagnostic character of chordates, we say the presence of pharyngeal slits instead of gill slits. Some do still use the term gill slits for landslats pharyngeal slits though. Besides that, of course, you can see the fact that their tail extends behind their anus. This is their dorsal nerve cord, and this is their endostyle, which help in digestion. These traits that I talked about just now is the characteristics of chordates. Oh, and if you see images of landslats and you see these light roundish things along the ventral lateral side of their body, these are their gonads. When I said branchiostoma have gonads on both sides, while asymmetron and epigonithis only on their right side, these are what's being talked about. So yeah, you can see it easily most of the time. And yeah, that's their general morphoanatomy. Now let's talk about their lifestyle. Like I said earlier, landslats are typically half buried in the sand. By that I mean, that's how they mostly spend their time. They don't swim to seek prey. They just stay on the bottom and filter feed planktonic organisms. Water will enter their mouth, detected and filtered with their oral cirri. It will then enter the pharynx. They have an organ called hot check spit which can produce some kind of mucus net. This mucus net will push towards the pharyngeal slits and trap food particles in the water, which then will be collected in the dorsal groove of the pharynx, called epipharyngeal groove or epibranchial groove. This groove is ciliated and the cilia will push the food particles into their digestive tract. Oh, by the way, water will be collected in the atrium and exits through the atriopore, while food waste will, of course, be excreted through the anus. Oh, by the way, I did say they don't breathe with gills, so you might be wondering whether they have some kind of special respiratory organ. The answer is no, not exactly. They don't have a specialized respiratory system. They just breathe with their skin, basically. Oh, and another thing. I did say the name of their class, which is Leptocardi, means thin heart, right? And I said that's not exactly true because, well, they don't have a heart. They have a simple circulatory system, which is quite similar to that in primitive fishes, but the core difference is Lancelet don't have heart. They don't have red blood cells either. Okay now, what about their locomotion? I did say they spend most of their time half buried and filter feeding. So, do they have a locomotor system? This time, good news is, yeah, they do have a locomotor system. While they don't have endoskeleton or exoskeleton, they do have myomeres, which means they have muscle. These myomeres attach to their notochord, which serve as the axis of their locomotion. So yeah, they can indeed swim, but still, they are relatively poor swimmers. Okay now, what about vision? While they don't have eyeballs, like I said earlier, they have eye spot, 
scientifically called frontal eye. Singular, by the way. One spot on the front. Not only that, though, they have several other photoreceptors, namely lamellar body, Joseph shells, and Hesse organ. By the way, this Hesse organ extends to the tail, so they have a lot of photoreceptor spot actually. Keep in mind though, they most likely cannot see things like we do. It's just to detect light or dark, but with various spots available, they could detect wave of light, so they could potentially have an idea of what kind of thing is actually approaching and what is currently happening. To some extent, of course. One more thing that I would like to emphasize is, some publications question the functionality of lamellar body. It might not be involved in photoreceptions, but we're not exactly sure about that. So yeah. Alright now, what about reproduction? Is it also weird? Well, it's quite normal actually. They are not hermaphrodites and they exhibit external fertilization. During spawning season, females will release eggs into the water and males will release sperms. Fertilized eggs will develop into larvae, but what might be interesting is, these larvae are asymmetrical. The mouth and anus are only on the left side, the pharyngeal slits are only on the right side, nerve system and gonads are only on the right side, etc. After metamorphosing into adult, they will become symmetrical, which is why the fact that two out of three genera only have gonads on one side of their body is not exactly that shocking for lancelets, because their larvae are very asymmetrical. Oh, by the way, they have green fluorescent proteins, typically in their oral tentacles, but depends on the species, it can also be in their eye spot, gonads, and also tail. As far as I know, there is no definite answer to the function of this GFP yet. It might be useful to attract planktonic organisms, maybe to signal each other, I don't know. But yeah, Lancelet is actually pretty famous in the scientific community because they are the quote-unquote basal chordate. We've been using them as the model animal for the research of chordate evolution. We also found various fossils that resemble the Lancelet. Famous example would be the Pikaya, which is also a Yu-Gi-Oh card by the way. Anyway, my point is, we are still improving our scientific understanding on the evolution of chordate. I'm quite sure this will not stop because, after all, we are chordate, and humans tend to want to know more about human, which is why there will always be more and more research on landslides, which means we'll most likely get more information as time goes by. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, recently I've noticed there is someone who consistently leave a comment on my videos asking for a landslide video, and I thought, Hey, that's actually a good idea. If that person is watching this video, I hope this scratch your itch. Anyway, enjoy your day.